I'm doing a tutorial on applying masking fluid. So the materials you're gonna want for this tutorial are your masking fluid, and I am using Winsor & Newton's Colorless Art Masking Fluid. You're gonna want brush soap or bar, or bar soap, a cup of clean water, preferably a little more than that, and ideally a synthetic brush or brush you're no longer fond of. First thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna soap up, well, you're gonna wanna wet, and as you can see, my brush is wet. You're gonna wanna wet your brush and then soap it up in your brush soap. And you're doing this because coating your brush in soap helps protect the bristles and helps prevent it, the uh, masking fluid from getting all caught up and ruining your brush. Then you don't wanna shake this, you just wanna kinda tilt it to mix it. Shaking it actually aerates it, introducing air into the mixture itself and can ruin your masking fluid. Some people will pour their masking fluid out into a small container and then dip from there. Now that we've got masking fluid on our brush, you want to apply a thin layer to the area that you want to mask. And you want to work fairly quickly because the masking fluid will dry in your brush. And you kind of want to avoid any bumps, lumps, anything like that. And a thin layer is totally fine. If your brush gets sticky mid-application, feel free to wash it off and reapply your soap. And if you're using a colorless masking fluid like what I recommended, you should feel a slight tackiness to the paper and see a slight sheen. And some papers don't respond very well to masking fluid. I've had a lot of difficulty with Shenzhen handmade watercolor paper. Right now, we are using Canson's Moulin de Roy cotton rag watercolor paper. And you wanna apply your masking fluid, ideally, when your paper is fully dry. And you wanna give your masking fluid enough time to dry now. I have been told so many misconceptions about masking fluid including that you should let it cure for 24 hours before you paint over it. That last one is certainly not true. You do want to allow your paint to dry completely before you remove it, because it can tear up the paper if you remove it while it's still wet. And you want to try to limit the time your masking fluid is on the paper surface. All right, once it's done and I'm off camera, I apologize for that. You want to rinse off your brush in the clean water and then remove any excess masking fluid from your brush. You may then want to take it over to a sink and scrub it with brush soap or baby shampoo just to remove any leftover latex. So once this painting is complete, I'll cover, I will go over how to remove masking fluid from your illustration. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I painted the whole background. Now it's time for me to remove the masking fluid. And the reason for that is it's gonna leave a really stark mark and I want this to have the look of chalk. So I'm using a masking fluid eraser. You don't have to, but it really makes the job a lot easier. And you guys can see how white it is compared to the area I haven't removed. I mean, it is really just plain white paper. I've used a lot of other masking fluids before and I've kind of come to feel like it must be a matter of personal preference because I've used other people's recommendations that they swore by and I hated them. For me, I find Winsor & Newton's colorless masking fluid is the best. Other masking fluids I've used have stained the paper, have torn the paper. I'm okay with these kind of smutzes going on right now because I am going to be doing another layer on top of that. I've had masking fluids that basically permanently 
bonded with the paper. I mean, I've had all kinds of masking fluid. Ooh, a good peel. Misadventures. So if you're having trouble with masking fluid, I recommend you experiment around a bit, especially if you have access to friends who also paint, who might use different brands than you. Because I had almost given up on masking fluid, like I really hated it. This layer is a little thin, it's coming up. <coughs> if you go too thick, you're gonna have a lot of other problems. Like it potentially tearing the paper, not wanting to come up. But I could have done a third layer of this. If you're really cheap, you can even keep your masking fluid. Like see how there's a ball here and then mush it together and use that as a masking fluid pickup once you have enough of it. All right, I think I've got almost every bit of it that's gonna come up, up. It's actually time for me to get a new masking fluid pickup because this one has started to leave like smuts on the paper. You can see it's pretty old. So I hope this was useful, helpful, and informative to you guys. I hope it's answered some of your questions about using masking fluid. If you have any more questions, you can let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye guys.